Hello and welcome to another episode of Seven Latest Comic Stash. But this time we're trying something new. We are doing a news show. Yes. Um, depending on how this goes, um, we may be looking at doing this once a month. Um, looking at the big stories that have happened in the past month. Or, um, or, or the very least stories that have interested us. Yeah. You? I, I know, I know um, for a little bit of accounting, we talked about how often the comic news is in this month's issue. Big story happened and things like that. We, we, we think we'll generally tend to probably gravitate away from that sort of thing as, as, as oft as watching this show know that we are <laughs> reading often 10 years in the past so a lot of that stuff it isn't so uh, relevant to us but but yeah certainly trying to pick out some of the the news events that mean something to us and and you know maybe going forward maybe talking about some of the uh future releases that are floating our boat that we are interested in coming up and, and maybe to give you guys a bit of an idea of some cool stuff that might be coming out in the future exactly the future but it would be a miss of me if I didn't do what we always do. <laughs> and let's get into our reading corners. Is just the corner. And funny enough, um, speaking of uh, being in the past, I can only imagine that probably both of our reading corners are taken up primarily by stuff that hasn't been released this year. Let's go with and, and possibly... One of, one of mine is Nunu. Oh, well, get well. Let's go with that one first. Then it'd be a shame to after I just said that we're <laughs> doddering old fossils and dinosaurs that you didn't actually cover the new new thing straight away. So I have bought the first issue of Kevin Smith's ask or uh, view ask view uh, world universe run called Quick Stops. Um, I believe this is only going to be a four issue run um from dark horse uh the first one is about Br uh, holden and how he came up with blunt man and chronic um so very much in film canon to the characters that we all know and love from that universe um very very pretty black and white style um like this quite a bit um I, I saw you put it on twitter and i'll be honest i didn't even look it up because I, I just assumed it was old because i know they'd done sort of uh some comic book runs previously and things like that and yeah. i assumed it was kind of a diet i didn't realize it was a new one but i'm guessing with clark's three out there or three Clark, yeah, up, clark's three um then um then it probably yes it, it it's probably to i don't know Get a little bit, that, I guess. Yeah. Get a little bit hype in before the uh, film comes out, but yeah, no, this is. As I said it's only a four issue run, so it's not going to be anything massive. Um, but yeah, I will be getting the rest of them. Um, the completionist is it, that I am. Is it um, Kevin Smith written or? Yes, Kevin Smith has <laughs> written them. Because I know he often does, doesn't he? You know, like uh, not only his own stuff, but obviously he's got some runs out there on um, Batman and, and Daredevil, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, I, I, I didn't know whether he had his hand in this or not. Yes, this is all the fingers of Mr. Smith in here. Um, and also, because of course, you know, we have things that we have to live up to. I've been reading 1999's Blade Run. Um, and when I say reading the Blade Run, I mean I've read the first three issues, but the rest of it isn't on D Marvel Unlimited. Always check your runs before you start them. <laughs> that sounds dirty. And I mean, I, I almost <laughs> did the same thing with Ghost Rider. Um, and I want to say that was like the early 90s one. And I thought, oh, kind of, I remember reading a chunk of it, but never uh, finished it. So I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm going to put that on my list. Um, and I noticed that there's a massive raft in the middle, the raft I didn't read when I was collecting it. So I went, let's not add that to the list till I know that um, all the issues are actually on there because how much of a pain in the ass of that is if you get to the end of or a part of a story and go, oh shit, I can't read anymore. Yeah, um, I was really enjoying it as well, which is the annoying thing. Um, Blade is in Louisiana, in New Orleans, and uh, Morpheus 
is there and there is a small family um that where uh, vampires are known to be in the area and things but um they're not sure whether the daughter is on drugs or afflicted by a vampire um because she goes out random hours with a baby in a push chair um and just as it was getting to the part where it explained what was going on the run it's it yeah okay yeah so yeah um hopefully marvel you're listening get the rest of it up i wonder um sometimes with uh projects like that i kind of in my head i go what was going on around that time like what was going on why why did blade have a series then and I, I feel like probably just for desire more than anything else. Cause I, I think that was even too late for that blade TV show that they did for a little while. Cause that was probably mid nineties. film like. would have been out though. Oh yeah. But like, I think divorced away from that enough that they weren't trying to cash in on a, on yeah. a film. Um, yeah. I mean, there, there are um, plenty of kind of runs out there. I, I think we said before blades, a character that I, I've never read a ton of, um, but often seems to get short runs. Doesn't ever seem to get that kind of 50 issue series. You know, we'll get lots of sort of 10, 12 or limited series and things like that. Um, um, but someone I would like to um, dabble into a bit more. I'm just not really sure what the great Blade stories are. So I think I've never really um picked up a lot but i guess that's the beauty of marvel unlimited isn't it you can jump in and jump out of series is if they've just got an interest in the character yeah so it's one of those i will look at more um but i need to find one that has a full run of something instead of just you know three random issues the first three random issues yeah and, and it, it is a bit of a heartbreak as well isn't it when you do that yeah. you just you, you you just start to get into the the vibe of it and then you go oh, what you bastards. <laughs> yeah, once you yeah. Um, and the other one is a nice quick one. It is Alligator Loki, which is an infinite... Uh, infinite? Infinite, yeah. Um, I've, I've still not read a single one of those infinite ones. I see them on there all the time and think... There's, there's a part of me that w- I... You will correct me in a minute and others can correct me. But I see that and I go, well, it's not a real comic, is it? So it ain't be very good, is it? This is very, very pretty, but it is basically a picture book that has no words, no writing, no nothing, and you're basically just scrolling uh, up through some very, very pretty artwork that does nothing and goes nowhere. Well, that's the other thing I I tend to um, presume as well is that that they they would scrimp on the creative teams, you know, like they're not going to pay their top dollar creative team to come and do that. But I like the sounds of it being pretty, you know, I'm all for a, like, as long as it's not going to take up too much of my time, which it sounds like it's not, I'm all for like a nice bit of art. Um, I said, if you want to look at some very pretty alligator Loki art, then jump on them and you will scan yeah. through it in less than a minute. I mean, it doesn't sound like a terrible idea to me. It sounds quite like, you know, not a nice idea. Let's, let's look at some cool at, um, alligator art. <laughs> it's even just nice to say, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, no, what I was expecting was at least, you know, some words. But there were no words. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I'm also not sort of definitively sure, um, but I, I often presume that those infinite ones probably skew to the younger audience because they probably are the ones that are trying to, you know, smash out there for free so that people come back for more, like to try and get that, um, uh, to try and get the new addicts in rather than the, the, the people who are always going to be on the corner trying to buy the crack like us. Exactly. So what have you been up to in your filth corner? I've been back in Star Wars world again. Oh yeah, I read. Um, it, it's it, it come round on my rotation. Um, after we finished off, um, Batman. Uh, next thing up in the rotation was to pop back to Marvel and pop back to some um, uh, pop back to some Darth Vader. So uh, when we did the show on here, and uh, I'm still not smart enough how to link it, but it's in our on our channel uh, where we looked at the first two volumes of Star Wars and the first volume of Vader. Um, 
I actually read the second volume of Darth Vader. And so that takes us from, I guess, where we were when we stopped reading it, right the way up to what will be the first official crossover, which is uh, Vader Down. So I, I've, I've done the gap in bit between there and uh, uh, same creative team as what we were getting in volume one with Kieran Gillen and Salvador La Roca. Um, looks exquisite again. If I was going to be ultra picky and mean, for some reason, I don't really know why, in some of the issues, just I think the way, the angle, like he draws it as if, imagine he's the camera drawing it. Yeah. Sometimes it makes some of the characters look oddly heighted. So they still look really good, but they look really small, oddly. <laughs> um, and Just a perspective thing. But outside of that, yeah, the art is exquisite throughout. And it can the story continues in the vein of what or certainly how I felt we were enjoying from the first bit. So there's no drop off of quality. And certainly in these six issues, you get a lot of Vader time, which Vader's comic, but it really does lean into um, a lot of uh, Dr. Aphra. Um, oh, yes. And we do get a, f we, we revisit with um, some of the characters from the first volume. Um, so the, uh, the non-Sith, like kind of powered people that were introduced in that first volume, they're around and um, he gets kind of a new, I say guardian assigned to him by tag. And, 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 but that continual sort of evil intrigue that's going on there, you know, like Vader's got his plans, the empire has its plans and quite often they are counterintuitive to each other with Vader trying to not let the world know that uh, yeah. he has his own plans. But um, yeah, um, as good as what we'd read previously. And um, I, I did, once I finished that volume, um, it was time to scroll on to the next thing, but um, it was really hard to put down. I, I almost moted straight into more Star Wars, but I am trying to keep that variance of, of, of what I read so I don't burn out on anything. But, but yeah, excellent stuff again. Yeah, it is saved on my list to go back to, but I just haven't got round to it. But yeah. I think I think the, the the trade's called Shadows and Secrets, and there's there's a good reason why, you know, because it is very much about you know they're playing in that dark side of the universe, and everyone's got a secret, and some of those secrets, um, yeah, so they don't go hand in hand with each other. But um, maybe one of Doctor Afra series really badly, and um, I do know spoilers that there is one at certain points, so can't yeah. wait to get to that point. So yes. Yeah. Um, so I think we both, when we did the Star Wars episode, we're both very much like, Dr. Aphra's fucking amazing. Yeah, and and to be honest, like, um, I'm not going to say that things sort of dramatically change, but I think getting more screen time and seeing some of that stuff we'd already see be reinforced, I think she's even more amazing. And I, and I can't imagine it's not going to continue to go down this route. Um, uh, I think uh, we, we saw it even in that, those first three volumes, um, how they don't give um, these guys a TV show because, my God, they've got the ability to introduce new characters into the Star Wars universe that I am instantaneously interested in so much more than probably anything that's been added to it since Return of the Jedi ended. Um, yeah. Give, give them a movie. Give them a TV show, please. <laughs> There's all that Marvel money. They could do this. Yeah, yeah. So we will get into the news and we are starting with some very sad news. Um, yeah. The passing of Kevin Conroy, um, best known as the voice actor of Batman um, slash Bruce Wayne in the Batman animated uh, series from the 90s. Um, he passed away uh, at the age of 66 due to cancer, fuck cancer. Um, has played Batman on and off um, since 1992. Um, obviously best known for the animated series, um, but has done countless spin-off projects as Batman. Um, he did the new Batman animated, uh, new Batman Adventures, Batman Beyond, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and then a load of films as well. Um, did I think the... I think effectively at a certain point he he basically become the voice of Batman, didn't he? I think for, um... for a generation he is yeah. the voice of Batman. Yeah, you're not. I mean, it would be, and I know obviously, unfortunately, now 
you know, things will go on. There will be more animated. There will be more games. So I guess we'll have to get used to um, that. But I think it was almost unthinkable, wasn't it, to release an animated um, endeavor or a game and not get him in to be the voice of Batman because it would have just been uh, rejected straight yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, there's the theatrical film Mask of Phant- Phantasm. Um, which is a hidden gem. If you've not seen it, get on it. It is fucking amazing. Um, but he was there for films all the way up to the late 2000 or 20, 2020 or 20-teens, should I say. Yeah. Um, so Batman versus Mr. Freeze, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, um, the Gotham Knight series, Batman versus Superman series, the Assault on Arkham series, as well as that Killing Joke, uh, yeah, redo, yeah, which, yeah, which we covered on here, didn't we? Um, I mean, I think I think you you said it quite poignantly on 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 Twitter, and I know you said it here earlier. Of um, for a lot of people, he's the voice of a generation, and not only kind of the voice of a generation for Batman, but I don't think there's probably many. Um, people who do voice work who are possibly known anywhere close as iconically as he is by so many people so um yeah you know a, a hugely tragic loss for the comic world the, the the movie world the tv world the video game world and of course for like members of his family yeah um as you said video games since 94 he has been batman in video games he's been he did the the SNES game back in ninety four. He was the voice of Batman Jeez. in the Arkham games. Amazing isn't it when you think it goes back that far. Yeah. Right? Did he did the Lego Batman games as well and the Lego DC superhero games. Yeah. You know, it's that thing of him and I I have to say him as well and here is Hamill, his Joker and Conroy as Batman were were the voices of, of me as a kid and have been with me since because they said going in and playing the Arkham games well when the Arkham come out like 2008-2009 and them being Batman and Joker just just I was in straight away because that's what Batman and Joker should sound like Um, and he was even active this year um, in the 2022 Pride anthology he wrote a story in that uh, called Finding Batman, um, which recounts him and his life and his experience and going into jobs being gay. And you can't be a Batman because you're gay. You can't do this role because you're gay. Because that was how shit was back then. Yeah. And yeah, it is, it is one of those of, for a, a generation of people their Batman's gone. Yeah. And yeah, you know, we can say, oh yeah, you've got your your film run ones, but how what's the longest film run is probably um Bale because of the length of time between films because he yeah. did three. Yeah. And that was what nine years? Conroy's been Batman since ninety three. <laughs> well when sort of um even even though it was over nine years, it's what, six hours? Yeah, you know, so I don't know how much like screen time in total or or, um, or voiceover time Conroy will have on it, but certainly more than the six seven hours that um, anyone else does. Um, so yeah, he yeah. is actually the the actor that has portrayed Batman more than any other actor. So yeah, he is he is the voice of Batman. Yeah. And also one of the very few other than probably I'd, I'd say Keaton, but I know you weren't too sharp on it, but can can do both Bruce and Bats and have distinguished voices that fit both. Yeah, comparing him to Keaton isn't a good bomb for me, but uh, um, for, for you, I guess, yes. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, so into the next piece uh, with much joy and triumph. I was going to say, you know, like um, after some some tragic news, I know for you and I, some 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 positive news here, isn't there? Netflix have confirmed Sandman will be back for season two, and on top of that, we're also getting a new Sandman comic run coming. Um, so this new run will be around Corinthian, and is going to be linked to the already running Nightmare County. Nightmare, con or yeah. Nightmare Country. No, not Nightmare Country, yeah. Um, so coming out in April next year, uh, Nightmare Country, The Glass House, Volume 1, um, which is writers James Tyron IV and Lynn Serrado uh, Estarfian, um, who will be the artist, who have been doing the new Sandman stuff anyway. Um, and and, and on the uh, writer, that James uh, Tinian, I, I, I've got him. He's one of the ones that's quite high up on my list to kind of um, read a lot of the superhero stuff. There's quite a bit of Batman stuff along the way, and, and he's very highly regarded. But I guess when we talk about Sandman, we're, we, you know, we are um, dipping more into kind of the fantasy horror um, genre on it. And um, he's uh, the one thing I have read of his, or the first half of it because that was what was all that's on dc universe infinite at the moment is um the nice house on the lake and uh, that is that is knock your socks off brilliant so the idea of going into something that he's writing in a universe that i'm now loving yeah that that's big big and exciting news for me so yes yeah, so you've got until april next year to you know get through all the sandman to be ready for it <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's quite a bit of um, sort of Sandman extended universe stuff that's come out um, in in these these later years. I mean, I don't I don't want to sort of um, jump too far and um, beyond though how pleased I was when we finally got that announcement of, of season two. Um, I loved that season one, and I it was going on so long. So when it initially didn't get um it's renewal and there was lots of talk about how um it was going to take a little bit while to get confirmed because the way that the viewing figures were going is it wasn't like a, a traditional um uh streaming service show that normally drops and everyone watches it and then yeah they, they like they were seeing that people were watching episodes and then they were waiting a week to watch the next they were kind of going against the grain and but then enough time went past where I just went, oh, no, is this one of those? Is this, is this Paper Girls again where it's going to be a show I really liked, but it just didn't find its audience because it was against other stuff that, albeit may not have been better, but might have just grabbed the attention. So I was really worried. So to see that announcement, because I think it's fantastic. Not only did I enjoy it, but I think it's crafted amazingly well. And, and we, you know, we're going through the comic book at the same time and um lovingly done and wherever possible a very very exacting adaption um yeah. so, so yeah good on your netflix there's a reason why you're my favorite streaming service and i and you know you're staying that now after after doing that for me yeah it's to do with this because obviously there's so so much more to to go in in just the original sandman run um, that we that has not been touched yet in the show. That this is this was like an appointment viewing for us as soon as it was up. But we did when we when me and Sarah watched it, we did two episodes a night. Yeah, because we were just like you, because of how visually stunning it was and the story yeah. and stuff. You just wanted to let it sort of breathe sink in bit, and breathe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't one of those things like, you know, you see some things that go on Netflix um, at the minute there's a FIFA corruption thing. And I've been three episodes in one night because I was just like, well, it's on. And well, you can do that with some things on Netflix. And they're the things that obviously I know they go, oh, we love Netflix because we just binge everything in one hit. But sometimes you just, because of the level of quality and the level of craft and the level of story that it's giving you, it has to be left to breathe. It has to be given 
that time for you to sit there, take it in, especially if you're watching it with your other half, talk about it, or if you're made yeah. to watch it at the same time, not jump into the next episode, not because you don't want to, because you're yeah. there going, I want more. But I don't but, want it to end. <laughs> yeah, but I also I just also want to take in what's happened. and Because I remember messaging you while we were watching it, going, have you got to this episode yet? And you're like, no. I was like, as soon as you do, let me know. Yeah. It was nice, um, wasn't it? It felt yeah. clo- the closest thing like we'd had for I think for a long time to almost how TV used to be, where everyone would watch on the same night because it was on the same night, and then you go into the office the next day and you talk about it, and that sort of mentality died out quite a long time ago, especially with streaming. But this felt like it pulled some of that back, didn't it? Of going, yeah, I want to talk to someone about episode four. I just need to find someone who's on episode four so I can talk to them about it. Yeah, and that was the thing. It, I am all for it, all for more of it, and I'm hoping that we get multiple more series so we can have the full yeah. original Sandman run. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, one of the other phenomenons that there are out there now with, with um, TV in general, but let's say streaming, is that fear of do I want to commit to something if I don't know it's going to continue? And I think often with a show like this, it just being announced it's got a second season could drive some people who hadn't watched the first season to kind of go, oh, well, now I know it's got a second season. And because old school style, TV shows used to sort of start off on a high, didn't they, and kind of plummet, whereas yeah. there are some notable ones out there um, where it's found its audience and it's found its audience a season in or something like that. So, so yeah, I, I'm hoping this allows us to have more and more and more and if it was based off of quality alone um i think we get the whole kit and caboodle here but yeah unfortunately i think we do need to uh, remember that not everything is about quality in this world sometimes it is about um getting the right eyes and the right attention on it at the right time yeah um so next i have found a new bit that's coming um a sci-fi comic from some star trek writers um, so David A. Goodman, uh, a writer who did Orville and Enterprise, is about to do a new science fiction series for Dark Horse called Space Jab. Um, it will be a four-issue run, which seems to be Dark Horse's thing for new mm. things, is to give it just four issues to start. They're quite a big fan of the limited series as well, I think, yeah. Dark Horse. Um, with the art coming from Alvaro Skuscarcha and colours from Jody Easton um, coming in February next year. Um, the billing for Space Job is that it will be a motley crew on the SS Bush <laughs> the motley head crew. up. Is this, <laughs> no. is, this, is this just your some way to wedge bloody <laughs> motley crew into something again? <laughs> Yeah, just get Tommy Lee. I should have known that this was all our way to get Tommy <laughs> Lee involved. <laughs> um, so they go out on adventures and anything and everything goes is the uh, is the tag it's, they're going with. It, it's odd because it's one of the publishers that I would say that, um, or one of the biggest publishers that I rarely look at what they've got on their release schedule. I don't know why. Because whenever I read something from Dark Horse, I like it. But I tend to go look at Image, look at Marvel, look at DC. Then I look at Boom because I know they've had um, some really good sort of creator own stuff in, in the, the last few years. And then I don't tend to look anywhere else. So I'm glad you've kind of floated it out there. Because, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't go into... Um, Dark Horse and, and what they've got on the uh, release agenda anywhere near enough. Yeah, and the thing is, I just saw it, and I know your your joy of Star Trek, and I thought this could be well, something and, that's and right. And weirdly up your enough, alley. it's quite interesting because I don't like Orville, so it's quite a nice balance. It's like, what am I going to get? Am I going to get? Oh, and when I say I don't like Orville, to be fair to Orville, I did only watch about four episodes, and I'm told that it gets better and better and better. But you know, sometimes when you're just if you're not like it might it might get better, but I, I was so not enjoying it after four episodes that I went, I, I don't really want to give it the time for this to get better because you had four, well, I say four hours, probably like um, 
probably like three hours when it's four episodes, but three hours of my time. And you not only didn't grab me, well, you not only didn't grab me, you actually made me, or or I didn't like it. I actively didn't like it. So, um, so yeah, it'll be an interesting balance to see kind of which side of it I come um, out out on and possibly Orville struggled as well, because as much as I like a lot of the people in the cast, it felt like I was watching them being in a show rather than actors playing characters. But, yeah. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so the next piece is more sad news. Um, the passing of artist Carlos Pacheco, um, who has died at the age of 60. Um, a... I'll put some, um, I'll put some um, sort of samples of, of um, his art up around this bit as well so um so that people can see if they don't know like what his art style was like yeah uh so uh had fallen in ill after getting als um checo started work doing spanish language editions of marvel books back in 1993 um and what uh what an amazing start as well isn't it because i think so often when you hear about people getting into these you hear about people who kind of jump straight in at the top but it's so yeah. nice to kind of think that probably someone whose dream it was to probably draw these characters he loved as a kid but you know when you get offered the how about out drawing the spanish language version you probably think oh it's a job in it i'll yeah. take it um but then to kind of go from that to be able to transition into a top end comic book artist is, is is quite a beautiful part of the story yeah um getting his first sole penciler job uh doing art for dark god um in 90s as well um then went on to work and do work on the flash which is um, um i said to you earlier which is where i was introduced to him i was reading the flash at the time it was a great run um and i think often when you are reading and enjoying something and a new artist is coming on there's a little bit of fear factor of going well actually well, I vibe with said new artist compared to yeah. old one, and uh, yeah, very, very grabbed me straight away. Um, so, so yeah, some a, a grand start in my eye line. Anyway, it wasn't one of those ones where you go, oh, bloody all like, don't read his first couple of years worth. They're a bit toilet, and he gets better. <laughs> um, then went on to do Avengers Forever, Inhumans, Justice League, uh, Virtue and Vice. Um, some Sp- uh, Superman, Batmans, and then also did Mega Event 2009's Final Crisis at DC and 2013's Age of Ultron at Marvel. So when you're getting work on these sort of level big boy Uber events that are, you know, year defining yeah. for these companies... Um, sort of says what level of regard he was held yeah, in. He, he had his time as um, in those kind of upper echelon superstar artists, you know, not not the image boys days, but we'll never see that life again. But certainly, as you say, someone that the big companies would go to and say, this is our big event of this year. We want you to draw it. So, um, yeah, an immensely... Um, talented artist and again another unfortunately very sad loss to the industry yeah and finally you say and finally i've got a little bit after you and finally but it, but, it, but it does kind of link on from you and finally so um yeah so our boy super juan cena has confirmed that he will be happy to revise his role as Peacemaker for the HBO Peacemaker show. We're getting season two. I, I take it from that. You're very excited about this. Uh, yes. it's the Peacemaker series, TV series is just funny as fuck. Um, helped by the fact seeing Cena being so not what we're so used to with Cena. He plays the role of Chris so fucking well. Um, and it was one of those of me and Sarah watching it, and we were just giggling all the way through. Yeah, um, I, mean, I remember you watching it and going on about how good it is. I mean, I've not seen a single episode, and, and I, I won't. 
stroke can't because I haven't seen Suicide Squad yet. So uh, until such a time as I do, I won't watch Wolverine. And uh, the good news on it is as well that James Gunn will be doing season two. Um, so it's not being handed off to somebody else or uh, a minion to a lesser minion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, James Gunn is writing and directing. Phone this one in. Give it to the minion. He can, yeah. he can knock it out. It's popular now. So, yeah, that that also fills me with much joy because it, it feels... It, it stinks that it did stink of a James Gunn production and that's what made it fun and it had that right level of serious to humour balance that he does so well. Um and the talk that James Gunn is getting the keys to DC to well, that do was, as he um, likes. What I was gonna pick up as kind of the end finally off the back end of this is the um because it's not something we've spoken about like either off the show or on the show, but um it was kind of to lean into that that he's he's I think the term is head of creative, I think they've given him for 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 the DCU um or the DCEU. I think it's everything basically, hasn't he? He's got the yeah the, 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 like the lead on it. So um how do you uh, we're neither of us are massive fans of DC Cinematic Universe, are we? I think that's fair to say. Well, um, put it this way, I haven't even bothered with Justice League. Either well, cut. Well, it's probably for the best. Um, how do we feel with that idea of a James Gunn led uh, DC cinematic universe? Does it does it uh, excite you more than what we previously were getting? It does. Um if you look at what he did with Guardians, you look at what he did with Suicide Squad. I know you haven't seen it, but the Suicide yeah. Squad shot. I've certainly heard good things one. about it, yeah. He gets it, and he's not afraid of putting the foot weird comic book references into stuff. Yeah. Um, it's like in Suicide Squad, he uses Staru. And you're like, yeah. who the fuck? Who doesn't read comics knows well, who Star Room is. And also, um, God damn, he must be a charming bastard to convince a studio executive to give him millions of dollars and say, I'm putting a starfish in it as the villain. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the bit, you look at what he did with Guardians and he took a D-level comic yeah, book. Yeah, that's fair. Run yeah, that's, at that's the time. Po po possibly that might even be generous at that level, if I'm honest. Like, yeah. But, other than the hardcore, yeah. who knows who any yeah. of these guys are? As, um, as great as the um, the series was that was running in and around that and before that, yeah, you're right. No one had a clue. Like, um, I mean, we've often talked about how um, Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor are now these um, ma amazingly famous people, but even they were not that widely known as concepts. Yeah. The Guardians are a million miles behind that. So certainly he's got good form for um being able to get people to buy into a concept and love it and this is the thing with him doing stuff i feel that it is going to be a lot more true to the universe and we won't get what we get at the moment going with batman at first as, as the main idea here where we get the joker rolled out every five films where we get Penguin rolled out every few films. We get Catwoman rolled out every few films. He understands that there is these pantheons of characters and villains that can be worked with and used, and you don't just have to rinse and repeat the same few. And as I said, wow. with Suicide Squad, he brought out Saru. Could we get... You know, I'm Batman getting the ventriloquist or Batman getting Mad Hatter or well, okay. So, so counterpoint, devil's advocate counterpoint. I'm actually a big James Gunn fan, but you said you said rinse and repeat a lot of times there. Here's the counterpoint and the counter argument. Hasn't he only released the same thing over and over again though? There's Guardians One, Guardians Two, Suicide Squad. Peacemaker is big things. Is there that much differentiation between them? Because ultimately, aren't they all just comedy characters, stroke squads of unusual people thrust together? 
And can you do that with Batman? Can you do that with Superman? Can you do that with Wonder Woman? Do we, do we want a comedy Justice League? Do we want Superman to be coming in and telling cop gags or pretending to be invisible or all of the things that currently is what we've seen from James Gunn movies? See, this is the thing, obviously, we don't know and I don't expect him to be directing and writing everything. No, but he's got the creative direction. This to me, it depends on who else is going to have with him. But, but all we can, judge, all we can, all we can guess I, on, though, is, is what we've seen. And what we've seen in his pantheon James of work... Does, is James Gunn does is, James is Gunn. James Gunn comedy um, put into a superhero world. No, I don't want Damn to. Damn you! Take my, take my. I, 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 that's the thing. I don't want to. I, I, that's the thing. I don't want to. I just think, like you know, like it, that. That's one of the interesting things, isn't it? Of going because my instant reaction was brilliant. I mean, first it was brilliant they've taken it away from Zack Snyder. But, yes. Um, but my my yeah my my second reaction was brilliant. I like his films, and then when I thought about it, I thought, yeah, I do. But I like Guardians because they're his films. They're the ones yeah. I've seen, and I, I don't know whether I want a whole universe, because one of the things we've talked about when we talked about Marvel burnout is um, potentially some of the success of Gunn was so successful in that Guardians that that almost become a large part of the Marvel formula for all of the other directors, didn't it? I mean, there was a lot more humour that come into each of those movies after and the Guardian and- train started rolling. I suppose that if you think that's why we got Tiger doing Ragnarok the way that he did Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, and and um, and, and don't get me wrong. Like I said, do we want a comedy Justice League? I actually do because one of my favourite runs of Justice League is when they were pretty much a comedy comic for a while. And I say comedy like very kind of light and funny, but it was when they were not the best Justice League. You know, they didn't have all of the the good superheroes at that point. Um, but you probably, if you're running a billion dollar franchise or potentially billions of dollars franchise, I, I don't know whether that is what you want. And then, as I say, no way do I think that he would necessarily do that. And as you say, there'll be more directors and more writers. But but yeah, I just want us to maybe temper our expectations a little bit because, and he has done more than Guardians and, and, and Suicide Squad, but I think that's really what we've seen and that's where success has come from. And Having not seen Suicide Squad, I get the feeling that Suicide Squad is Guardians with obscure DC characters. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe that's just something to factor in of going, you know, do, do you want, you might not want Joker for five movies, but when you get Joker, do you want him to be... Um, the Joker that probably we see in The Killing Joke, or do we want... Um, uh, Kurt Russell in Guardians 2. I want crazy killing joke. <laughs> but, 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 but as I say, I'm, I'm much more confident in it now that we've got him rather than Snyder. Um, caveated with, didn't mind Snyder before he got DC either, but then I very much realised that Snyder was a one-trick pony and that trick he used over and over again and that again might possibly my fear with James Gunn here. Yes. So, before we leave you, thoughts down there of what you think of a news monthly show. Um, hopefully not with death in it as much. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a it was un- Yeah, it was unfortunate. Um, uh, but but uh, certainly one of the things is we didn't we we uh, we didn't want to go without acknowledging those passings either because yeah. you had two people who in sort of different arms of the industry um had a very big impact on the industry so it would have felt wrong to kind of be talking about some of the stuff that's going on in the comic book world without covering that but um but yeah let's hope that next time out it's it, it's all happy chirpy stuff rather than any uh, the new shiny things that yes. we can throw money at yeah um, yeah comments down there on what you think of this um as always like subscribe ring bells do all of that stuff um as we are getting very close at the time of recording to 150 150 i want to get to 200 because i've got a very special video for seven to do a reaction to i want to get to 200 so if you if you tell me about this and uh, if you told me and i've forgotten 
Yes. Good. That's probably for the best, <laughs> isn't it? It'd be a nice surprise for me then, wouldn't it? If it it's, will. If it's, if it's bloody Motley Crew live, you can suck right off. <laughs> no, we need, that, we need is... a thousand. We need a thousand. For and then and, Motley Crew live. And then we'll do a whole live set of Methods of Mayhem. Mm, yeah, yeah, I'll do that for a thousand, but that's but no less than a thousand. <laughs> uh, so yes, as always, like subscribe, ring bells, watch all of our other content on the channel, watch the music reacts. People like yeah. those. Watch Fright Train if you haven't already, and uh, watch the boy here go on about the joys of the original and clearly the better yes. Quicker Man. Well, yeah, I mean, that's because one of them is a masterpiece and the other one is Toilet. So Bees! That was, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, come and join us on Twitter. Come and join us in our Facebook group um, because as much as we love doing these videos, um, it is people's chance to just come and have a chat with us. I would say face-to-face, -face, not strictly true. Virtually face-to-face, -face, I guess. Yes. So, um, so, yeah, people are always welcome there. And until next time, and when we do come next time, we're going back to a book that we started ages ago. We've got Nightfall Part 2. And until then... P.S. Before we go, it's not even a lie. We've recorded it as well, so we can't back out of this one, kids. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Uh, so until next time, goodbye. Mm -hmm.